Mr. Hogg, are you surprised that 82% of the people we polled should support Mr. Powell? No, I don't think I am. I think it entirely confirms uh, my assessment of the forces uh, which um, uh, Mr. Powell has led loose and which the government failed accurately to estimate. But would you accept that our figures show there is a gap, quite a considerable gap, between public opinion and official conservative policy? And what do you intend to do about it? Well, there's an intense gap between um, uninformed public opinion on matters of this kind. And you say that all this, studying this is article. uninformed? A great deal of it's uninformed. But what I'm saying is this. Uh, we were right to divide against the bill of the government on a reasoned amendment because it's our business to reflect public opinion. And we were right uh, to condemn Mr. Powell's inflammatory words because it is our business to lead responsibly public opinion. But if you feel it's your duty to reflect public opinion, may you not have to change your policies somewhat? Um, I don't think so. Mr. Powell was considerably at pains to point out that his carefully prepared Rodman Tade uh, contained very few things, only one that I was able to do, note, uh, which wasn't already perfectly well known. But unfortunately, he included in it a great deal of inflammatory language which was um, wholly inconsistent with our method of, of approach to racial problems. Do you feel that any of the support for him may be because people feel that he was standing up and speaking his mind, rightly or wrongly, when so many politicians are felt to be mealy-mouthed on these controversial issues? I think that he was, in fact, backed precisely because he appealed uh, to the fear and the insecurity which has led to a deterioration in the ra relations between the races. And um, it was precisely because he was backed so strongly uh, and because every one of us knew that if we made that sort of speech, we would get that sort of support uh, that I so strongly criticized him in the House last night. I think this is demagogy and not leadership. May I ask you why you think Mr. Powell should have chosen to make such a speech at a <coughs> crucial moment? Well, I can't um, attribute motives to him. Perhaps he thought he was helping my leadership in the House of Commons on the second reading last night. But if he had he asked made me... made you resign, didn't he? If he had asked me whether it was helpful, I think I would have given him a rather different reply. What, in a word, did you think of his speech? I thought it was highly imprudent... Um, I thought it was, um, I said in the um, House what I thought about it, uh, I thought it was disloyal to his colleagues. Um, I, I thought um, that he was doing the very thing which he was accusing the government of, that is to say he was lighting fire near gunpowder and um, bringing nearer a situation in, where, in which there might be blood if not in our rivers, at least in our streets. In other words, I thought there was a beam in his eye, even if there was also another beam in the government's eye. Do you think the less of him for making the speech? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr.